Hello, hello. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. So, let's do this thing. We are talking about Mars. Source of the mind, right? Mars under Aries is an irresistible, or is an irritable character. There we go. Quarrelsome and always ready to attack by word or action or predisposition. It also is being a slut. So if you are trying to conjure up some lust magic, you can use the Mars of Aries to make you do that. Taurus is boldness. Ready to do anything to succeed. Let's see. Young under the yoke of women. Um, and falls to misfortune from the weakness. Uh, that results of that, at least according to the old books, right? Uh, perilous character. Tendency to abduction, rape, adultery, and liable to dangerous consequences of those actions. So when you're dealing with Mars of Taurus, that is the uncontrollable physical actions that can occur. So it's going to be the men and women who take what they want because that is the energy of the earth. It does what it wants, regardless of the fortunes of those around it, without forethought, without understanding, without that next level of intelligence. So while it is ready to do actions, the actions aren't specifically malicious. It's a byproduct of the lack of foresight and follow through. The Gemini aspect is the love of armies and a warlike strategy. Prudence with cunning and acute minds, uh, judges and office of judges, uh, facilitating inquiry and enabling them to determine the hidden crimes. So like I said, with what, with what happens with Taurus, where its actions are malicious as a side effect of it being itself, that is not necessarily what Gemini does. Gemini is the active version of that where you have to want to see beyond you have to look into the hidden nature so like i said before gemini is like herding cats you've got one way that you want to go this direction you've got one to go this direction but from both directions you have to get one single path down otherwise it's too confusing so as we get into cancer it's favorable for those who are who choose a military career for arts for medicine and surgery it aspires boldness, but it's also inconsistency of will um, and blindness. So you, it'll, it's, it's like your fish is in a pond, not fishes in the ocean, right? Like what you do with Mars of Cancer, you will be the big fish in the little pond, right? Until you get put into a bigger pond, which case you could be killed, or you know other disastrous effects that occur. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So when you're dealing with Mars of Cancer, because Mars is a fire sign, or Mars is a fire planet, and Cancer is so watery, you can balance those out with each other. So it's like hot water. So it's going to be what is going to be the mind of those who choose a military career? What is the mind of being fluid in the arts? What is the mind for inspiring boldness it is what is the flow through of that energy as it comes out in response to what it is you're casting with mars and of cancer in that case the mars of leo it's fierce character boldness with a tendency of sad tendency of sadness serious illnesses are threatened especially of the breast uh to sadness so Leo is typically ruled by the sun when it's ruled by Mars, the forceful character, fierce character. So it's like the angry lion, right? So it's not going to be like Leo under the sun where that's a more stable authority figure. This is like a young lion protecting its tribe, right? And so when we move into Virgo, it's the predisposition to anger, but it's also held in check until the time comes to take vengeance right so it's the rationality of calm patient waiting until that other person makes a fuck up and then take everything right so virgo under mars can do that 
So when you're conjuring up Virgo and Mars, if you're going to do things against people, Virgo is the sit and wait and watch. Right? For Mars and Libra, the love of arms, weapons, um, but the, the, from the love of that through being in favor of unbalanced actions, right? Is it danger? So it's the, the end of the carrier unless indicated. But how do I want to word that so it makes more sense? So we know Libra is a source of balance. The way that this works with Mars is it's going to be the logical seeking of balance or it's going to be the intentional fucking it up. Like, you know what should balance? You know, you know, you know. But that's when you're just going to say fuck it anyway and just go for it. Um, the Mars of Scorpio is boldness, predisposition to triumph over the enemies. It signifies wisdom, good regulation, and celebrity. Uh, it also has excess in the matter of love, um, love of women, and leads to acts of violence. So if you are doing a love spell and you happen to have anything for Scorpio in the ingredients, that's where you get those obsessive problems. So yeah, like you don't do love spells that include spells for Scorpio. Just don't. <laughs> That's a no-no. <laughs> Sagittarius is affectionate. Uh, it's inactive at the beginning of its life, but sympathy and favor for the great aspects of life. It, it, it will gain favor. It will grow. So as you use the Mars of, Mars of Sagittarius, you can use that to gain favor. You can use that to channel energy into you. What's up, Dan? How are you doing, buddy? So as you are doing that and you're going through and you're working with the Mars aspects of Sagittarius, that's how you would do it, to invite in favor from people greater than you, right? The Capricorn aspect gives for courage and sympathy and favor of powerful men. So a lot like Sagittarius where it's uh, you become great, it's Capricorn under these kinds of constraints are is you are, it's the smarts, not the actions, right? Sagittarius is about the actions that, or the, the rather the inactive quality of the beginning state where Capricorn is the action that you take during that state. And Aquarius is the inclination to evil and to crime and to violent quarrels and as a uh, menace to boldness. So, or menace of blindness, sorry. So Mars under Aquarius, under the situation where you have Sagittarius and Scorpio giving you boldness, giving you the means to understand and connect with and to learn with others in Aquarius, you are essentially pulling the rug out from somebody and saying, go swim. Straight up. Like, this shit is no joke. <laughs> Pisces. It inclines lasciviousness. Uh, favor of princes and with the great. So uh, with Mars that's and Pisces, that's when you will lead with your crotch. Whatever you got cooking down there for plumbing, that is where that tendency to think with a... Genitalia first. We don't want to do that. So, Mars. Under the sun, lots of good. Uh, affliction, uh, afflictions, hard work, danger of words. Uh, by iron or fire. Weak and unstable resolution. So, Mars represents the two the twofold forms of balance in this case. So, Mars of the sun, it's going to be forceful and it's going to be vigorous and it will be good. The son of Mars is not going to be quite as oomphy if you're not putting the sun first. Like, Mars is the secondary energy. It is the mental energy. It's the, the stability energy, right? Whereas the sun, it's just like the overpowering, like, oh my god, it's too hot outside. I'm going to melt or burn up or whatever. So putting those two things together, you can temper the fire of the sun by using these concepts of Mars in this case. Then we move into the Mars of Venus. So it is the embarrassments. It is 
lawsuits occasioned by women, embarrassments by women. Uh, the na native of the sign is feminine. The woman will be bold and free in her manners. Uh, dangerous adultery with men or women in inferior situations according to the sex of the subject matter of the horoscope. So when you are, like I said, doing stuff that lets you lead with your parts instead of with your rational mind, that's where you can conjure that shit out of or put it back to. So if you know that somebody does that, you can find the state of the Mars of Venus if they're men or if they're women, it would be the Venus of Mars, right? Because it's, again, you're, the, the primary aspect is the gender, secondary is the behavior. So long as you have the behavior of Mars to balance out with the Venus aspect, the mind and the body in life working together. All right, now, last but not least, oh, no, got a couple more. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mercury is God, judgment, intelligence, and seizes the interest of life but inclines to lying about it. So it's communication, yes. Mental communication, yes. Mental stimulation, oh, absolutely. But it might be kind of shady. Like, just be real. Like, it's probably going to be shady. Um, and then the moon of Mars. Danger of words. Um, violent deaths. Um, it is a reflection of if you say bad shit, You'll piss people off. People don't want you to be alive anymore. It is dangerous, right? So you have to be careful about how you reflect upon the behaviors of the moon, which is all about reflection and cultivation of that, with Mars, which is all about the mind and the ability to work in that aspect. So when you put the two together, you've got to be careful about what you're going to say. So you can use it to elevate somebody what they say, or you can use it to cause unfavorable actions by what they say. It just depends on what ingredients you're using and why you're using them and what order inside that that you are doing. So this ends the conversation for Mars. I look forward to talking with you about the next one, which is going to be the sun. Alrighty, so I will see you next time, my friends. Bye for now.